500, 500 people sitting in long chairs and going, ah. So I think people in Quebec in general just love the stars. So at the Astrolab, the idea was to just make the sky accessible to everybody and not just people who do research. Again, Jackie's Bernard Malenfant, the founder of Astrolab and night assistant at the Mont Megantic Observatory. Okay, so set it up a little bit more. One thirty at night, these stars are coming at a rate of how many per hour? Well, that's, that's where it gets tricky, and, and we'll get down to how they do the counting in a little bit. When I arrived at 11 until 2.30 in the morning, there might have been three or 400 stars, but it really picked per up. Per hour. One, per hour, yeah. yeah. Really picked up around 1.30, and they were saying there were probably about 400 per hour. It's just it's a really neat experience. You're up there, and despite all the shouting that's going on because of the stars, it's still pretty serene. You've got almost you know total darkness on the ground. All the the surrounding region, all the municipalities have agreed to take part in it, what they call a dark sky reserve. The only so, one in the world, huh? Only one in the world um, means that all of the all of the, the the municipalities have taken measures to dim their lights, and so the sky is cleared of a lot of light pollution. So clear that the the stars, the moon is so bright that you've actually got to look to the other side of the sky so that you. Can and see the Perseids clear. And you've got these reclined wooden seats, all these people lying back, ooing and aahing. And while I was there, I was lying back on one of these seats and I was sitting next to a guy named Suyun. He came to Mont from Montreal and uh, he's somewhat of a, uh, an armchair astronomer, it sounded like to me. And here he is, relatively early in the night, maybe around midnight, explaining to me what was going on above him. The Milky, the Milky Way. You can kind of see the white band. We can see like Orion's belt. So, uh, Perseus, we saw a lot of shooting stars. We also saw Jupiter and the moon. Oh, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you, have, have you had a, has there been a most impressive shooting star so far? Or? Yeah. There, there, oh. there, <laughs> there was one that lasted for almost two seconds. So, like, you had time to go, oh, and then it was still going. <laughs> It's pretty impressive because <laughs> usually you shout out for a short time because you, uh, you expect it to disappear after a while, right? But then that one is just, it kept going even after you stopped shouting. <laughs> and tell me you were going to mention how they count them, 843 that you saw? Well, that, Jackie, is where the shouting comes in. I'm pretty sure people would be verbalizing their awe anyway. But the coordinators, the Astrolab people up there tell you that every time you see a star, shout out and, and, and there's a fellow who's got a little counter and he gives it a click every time there's a, a shout and so it's probably not the most exact count there were times when I'd catch a, out of the corner of my eye see a star or a couple of stars go by while everyone was still stupefied and shouting about a really big one but it's pr probably a pretty good ballpark and the night I was there, the guy who was doing the counting, holding the counter, was a fellow by the name of Sébastien Gauthier. And like most of the coordinators up there, he's done tons of stargazing. In fact, he used to work at Mont And now he comes back every year as a volunteer during the five nights of the, of the Perseid shower. So while he was doing the counting, I asked him to, to think about one of the coolest things he's seen over the years um, doing meteor shower watching. And, and as you'll hear, his story literally begins with a shooting star. Whoa! Oh, big one. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm chasing uh, shooting stars for a while now, and, and in 2001, it was uh, during another uh, uh, meteor storm. It was the Leonids on uh, the 17th of November 2001, and we saw more than 4,000 uh, shooting stars during the night. And like uh, like tonight i was using i was pushing the button on the counter and counting the, the shooting stars and there was one very 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 bright and and we were in in an open field near a forest and then with these very bright shooting stars we were like this wow and and then the coyotes uh began began to 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 shout like Woo -hoo! for the shooting stars so it was a kind of a proof that animals can see shooting stars and it was very uh, amazing to see that no kidding that's pretty amazing it, it is coyotes and then four thousand across the night and, and as he mentioned there um he wasn't watching the perseids there are other shooting star um showers there are the uh, orionids in october the leonids in november and the geminids in december just about any night of the year huh Sébastien Giguère earlier explained that, yes, indeed, there are, um, in, 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 on any given night, somewhere in the sky you'll be able to see shooting stars and, uh, to the rate of about five an hour. Mark, all of this sounds just stellar. 
It is, Jackie. I'm going to wrap this up with a listen to how I wrap things up on Wednesday night. As I left the mountain, uh, the fellow we heard from before, Suyin, uh, from Montreal, I asked him how he enjoyed himself. Well, it's 2.35, and we had an awesome time. Right? Right? Yay! Yeah! <laughs> I think we counted more than 100 shooting stars, but as a group, we saw more than 400. Again, Jackie, that's 400 for the time Suyun was up there um, because record-breaking night, 843 shooting stars. Think of all the wishes that are going to come true for you, Mark Apollonio. Good batch in store. Thank you. Thank you.